Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 11 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just getting done with a little bit of mining. Uh, okay, I lied, a lot of mining. Uh, tons and tons of mining between last episode and this one. I did a lot of mining up here, uh, hanging right around Y level 30, got myself lots of iron and copper and a couple other things. Went up a little bit, got a little bit higher for some more copper and such. And then I went down to get some gold and lapis, redstone and diamonds. So we should have a bunch of stuff. So I'm just going to sort all my junk that I collected here. Hooray for a sorting chest. Quickly learned that I needed more than a, just a regular old size wooden chest. So I upgraded this guy to iron. And as you can see, uh, after a good mining trip, yeah, he definitely uh, is pretty full. So all my stuff is sorting here. Uh, the, the fruits of my first mining trip appear to have already sorted into my uh, chests here. I want to see, all right, fire shards definitely need to be added to some kind of chest. Um, so this must be the first set of fire shards I got. Uh, let's shift left click here and we will insert this guy and go snapshot that guy cool fire shards added um, otherwise we're just gonna let everything sort and see how it works out but so far everything's working well so the ultimate test of a of a real sorting system is I just went mining for an hour let's see what kind of stuff happens so uh, as you can see lots of ore getting thrown down here getting processed and smelted gotta love that I think it's all working pretty well. So this episode, I mentioned I wanted to start working with a new mod. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time on Ender.io and just getting the basic structure of our base set up. Today, I wanna work with a mod that's gonna give me a couple nifty items that are gonna help me out with some of my future expansion plans. So I definitely wanna start working with Batania. Uh, Batania is a cool mod, and I was in single player testing stuff, so disregard the fact that I was in cheat mode there. Batania is a bunch of cool stuff that relates to flowers. So it's all um, flower-based magic type mod. Uh, there's all these flowers that are part of world gen, and you can see I've already gotten quite a few of them. I'm probably gonna have a separate chest for Batania. I'm gonna have a separate room, like a whole different, I'm thinking a different building, right? Um, and I'm, I haven't entirely decided where I want to build that exactly. This is obviously uh, my smeltery area. I'll probably disassemble this at some point and move it into a building somewhere. Um, but for now, I'm thinking I might wanna have some kind of building dedicated to Batania. Maybe right over here on the edge of this lake might not be a bad idea. That would be cool, right? I don't know. There's there's a couple places I could put it. I'm going to try and figure out what will be a good spot. Uh, and I want to try and build something nice. So first things first, I think what I'll do, grab my lumber axe here. Cool. And go chop down some trees. Because I'm going to check out what chisel has for me uh, by way of oak wood. So if we uh, take this guy over here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. You guys know I'm not terribly good at this but i'm gonna try um and try and make something that'll just kind of fit the batania theme right so it's like a you know it's a mod based on you know magic of living things like you know flowers and life and stuff like that so hopefully i can come up with something kind of cool let's see chop all this stuff down there we go and uh, i'll replant these things in a minute here gotta love the lumber axe by the way definitely useful Very cool having uh, these torches placed down like this because it makes it real easy to remember where I planted things. Lots of saplings to collect and such. So yeah, Batania will give me access to a bunch, not only items, uh, but some really cool blocks and something that'll just, a couple things that'll help me moving forward. So I'm kind of trying to, you know, focus on items that will help me, you know, with the next set of stuff. Plus it has some, you know, pretty neat cosmetic stuff too. Looks like it's getting dark. See, here's an example of a Batania flower. There's lots of them. You can't miss them. They're in a world gen all over the place. There's one. They have little particle effects kind of shooting out of them every now and then. So let's get inside and start figuring out what I can do with Batania. And I'm just gonna sort all this stuff that I collected here. My sorting system is still running. So I should probably consider speed upgrades at some point. It does take a little while to process all this stuff, but it's, like I said, not a big deal. I just want to real quick check and make sure that I have a backlog of ores in here, I presume. No, I guess the sag mill is doing a pretty good job keeping up with it. Neat. 
Now oh, a bunch of copper is going somewhere. I assume that's going into the sag mill. Yeah. Silver's in there right now. Oh, there we go. A bunch of ores just got sent down. Cool. All right, so, Batania. How do we get started? Well, in order to get started with Batania, we're going to need a book. And as a matter of fact, I don't know that we have any leather. So maybe I want to get started a little bit with something of a farm. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. I do have plenty of rotten flesh. Do I have any leather? No. Uh, can I get leather out of rotten flesh easily? That's a question I'm going to ask right now. So the long and the short of it is not with anything I currently have access to. But there is a way through Batania, so eventually. Let's, instead of starting with Batania just yet, get ourselves a cow farm. So I'm going to see about finding some cows. Now the way I like to go about this usually is using something that should be pretty easy to make, I think. A golden lasso. I'm just going to need an eye of ender and some golden nuggets. Alright, so mob farm time. Uh, Blaze rod or blaze powder, ender pearl gets me this and this, and then I just need a little bit of string and some gold nuggets. And I can put together my golden lasso. Totally extra useful nifty gadget right there. Um, the next thing I'm going to need is probably a place to keep my animals. So a real simple setup I'll do for now, and then we'll make something a little bit cooler down the road. I'm going to go ahead and make sure to get myself some kind of just fencing. There we go. That looks pretty good, right? Basic fence set up. I'm going to sleep through the night and find a place to throw my cows. I think I'll put them right next to kind of the... Come on down here, spider. Let's go. I'm going to put them right next to the wheat farm, I think. All right, back in a minute, guys. All right, guys. I think I've done a pretty good job here. You know what? I should probably lock down my supply backpack while I'm not using it. There we go. That'll make sure any dirt I pick up goes into my inventory rather than to my bag. So uh, built a quick little fence over here, knocked down the apple trees that I had sitting over here. Uh, they weren't regrowing the apples as quickly as I had hoped, so they have just lost their spot in the dire farm. Sorry, apple trees. What I do have, though, is a nifty little setup for a cow farm. Well, it'll probably be a generic all kinds of animals farm, but we'll see. Get rid of this stuff. That looks pretty decent. That'll grow into some uh, grass in just a minute. And otherwise, I think we're cool. Got everything? Looks good to me. All right, so let's go find some cows. Uh, the golden lasso is infinitely better than any kind of lead or any vanilla item that allows you to transfer animals from one place to another because it simply lets you pick them up. I'm pretty sure I've seen cows kind of back in this general direction as I've been doing some little bits of exploring. Um, really haven't explored all that much, but I'm probably sure I will once I get into Batania a little bit. So, cows. Where are you cows? I see pigs. I've seen sheep can't run anymore because I'm hungry. If I was, uh, you know, a little bit better on blaze rods, I probably would have gotten two um, of these lassos, but one's all right for now. There's a cow. Nice. Come here, you. See, he's living in a poor desert biome. I don't want the cow to live in a desert. All right, so as you can see, simply right-click on the cow with the lasso, and he's stored in there. Hello, cow. Everything about him is stored, by the way. So cows are all pretty much the same, right? But sheep are different because they have different colored wool. Uh, villagers are different because they have different trades. Uh, so all that information is stored. So, you know, when you pick up a sheep, it'll always be the same sheep when you place it back down. All right, so all I'm going to do is bring this cow back over here and throw him in the pen. Cool. All right, back in a few minutes. I'm going to get at least one more cow and maybe a couple pigs. Sound like a good plan? Uh, the main thing I'm looking for here is cows, obviously, right? But, you know, pigs will work too. And maybe even sheep, we'll see. Back in a minute. And luckily, I placed my cow farm right next to this here farm. So, I can get the mating. All right, back in a few. Gotta go find some pigs now. 
All right, now that I've managed to get a cow farm set up and I got myself a little bit of leather, let's snag some paper and make ourselves a book. And if we combine this book with any kind of sapling, we should get a guide to Botania, AKA the Lexica Botania. Uh, this is a nifty little book. Uh, first off, it serves as your guide to Botania. And you can see this little main menu here that's really cool looking, uh, has different chapters. The main first chapter is basics and mechanics. That gives you an introduction to the mod and some of the different things that you can make with the basic stuff, right? Uh, and then you can get into mana manipulation. So mana is a resource that you can generate and use within the mod to power your different uh, magical things. Uh, from there, there's also generating flora, which are flowers that can generate mana. Functional flora, which are flowers that do things using mana. And then now Natural apparatus, mystical items, so these are usually blocks and items, baubles and accessories, which we'll get into pretty quickly, alphamancy, which we'll check out probably a little bit later on in the series, because that's kind of a higher tier Batania setup, miscellaneous, which just lists a bunch of different miscellaneous things that you can get in here, and finally the lexicon index, which you can scroll through and see a list of everything, and you can also start typing to filter out so that you can only find, you'll see down here there's a little uh, hourglass, and as you type it fills out and, and filters the book for you. So some pretty cool stuff, highly worth reading. And then finally, the last note here is let's find a block. If you shift right click on a book or on an item in the world, it will open up the chapter on that book and it'll tell you all that you need to know uh, about that stuff. So lots of cool things uh, to take a look at there. Uh, anytime there's a block in world that's a Batania block, you can shift right click on it. Uh, you'll notice here that you can uh, shift right click on in world blocks and it'll bring you to the Minecraft wiki uh, if it's appropriate. Cool. Uh, and the crafting station, some um, you know stuff takes you to the FTB wiki. So it'll open up a browser in another window there and you can check out some information. So um, pretty cool stuff. Better Barrels at FTB Wiki, Trash Can at FTB Wiki. So it'll check out either the FTB Wiki or, um, you know, Vanilla Minecraft's Wiki. Cool stuff, right? All right, so now that we have the Lexicon Batania, let's get started doing some basic things. All right, guys, so it's real simple with Batania. Every flower you find out in the world will give you two petals. So simply add them to the crafting table, and as you can see here, I got a couple petals. So for example, the white flowers, I place them in a crafting petal, I get two petals each for a total of four, uh, not too shabby. Now what we're gonna do with that is go ahead and craft the following thing. The first component to Batania that you should always make is this guy right here. Actually, I want him to be, I'm gonna use the purple flower for this, not the white one. I'm gonna need the white ones in a minute. There we go, the Petal Apothecary. This is kind of Batania's crafting table. So basically, uh, you combine certain combinations of different petals in the Petal Apothecary, and using a little bit of inherent magic that's in there, it's going to automatically um, turn that thing into the particular flower you want. And you can read all about the Petal Apothecary, uh, either by finding it in the Lexica Batania or shift right-clicking on it, just like I said. So all you do is drop uh, the items into the Petal Apothecary. Uh, you'll need to have some water in there at all times, um, and you're gonna basically need to also have some seeds. So let's go find a spot to put it. I've decided that the way I'm gonna work this, by the way, um, I'm gonna need a bunch of seeds, is to start with Batania this episode. Then next episode, I wanna do a little bit of gathering of resources between now and then. I wanna make a really cool looking Batania building, or at least try to. So uh, I need to get a couple things before I can do that. So we're gonna place the Batania stuff outside and then we're gonna build a building around it. Sound like a plan? Uh, now the next thing I wanna get is something from Ender.io, believe it or not. I'm going to get a couple cauldrons and surround them with any kind of glass, quite clear glass I thought would work and apparently it doesn't. So let's throw that in here and we'll get this glass. All right, what am I doing wrong? I want a reservoir. Glass around a cauldron. That's what it should be doing. Interesting. This should be working, unless I'm, oh wait, a couple of them need to be fused quartz. Okay, so that's four quartz. So let's get one of these guys cooking in a blast furnace. I knew I was doing something wrong. So fused quartz here, one. Okay, so I need eight total. Is this thing done? It is, cool. It does need to go into a blast furnace though. So alloys 
mixing and you can see there that should cook up pretty well. I was cooking some uh, stone in here a moment ago and I configured it to output to the top automatically. So let's see if this will fix my reservoir issues. Sweet, that gets me two reservoirs, which are totally useless. I'm going to need a total of eight reservoirs. I'm going to need a bit more of this stuff. Back into alloy mode, cooking it up nice and quick. One. And then the second one. There we go. So this is a very useful block because um, what it can do is when placed in a world in a two by two pattern, if you know how to make a two by two pattern, unlike me, there we go, uh, it automatically can uh, create water for you. Add two buckets of water for an infinite water source. So that's all I need to do. So let's actually get ourselves some water. And where's my bucket at? I know I've got one somewhere. And I'll put the golden lasso away for now. I don't need it. So we'll take a quick run over here. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be the final position, but what I'm going to do is stick the reservoirs right here. Actually, you know what? No, I think... Cool. And then one, two. And that should now all of a sudden be an infinite water source. Cool. Uh, now, if I place this here and right-click with a wrench, I think, um, to enable auto output. I thought that that would work, but apparently it's not. Let's see. Do I have to have this thing next to it? I didn't test this. Usually I test what I'm doing ahead of time, but... Oh, there we go. Cool. I see what you have to do. All right, so you have to right-click with the wrench first and then put the block on top. And that should now work. Huh, strange. Oh well, I've got other options that I'll go with later down the line. I thought the reservoir would be able to auto output into this thing, but I guess not. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll save the uh, reservoir for another time. And for now, we'll just stick with the pedal apothecary and manually filling it with water. Cool. So we've got the Petal Apothecary there. The very first flower you're probably going to want to make is this guy. If we take a look in here, you'll notice that um, according to basics and mechanics, um, the first thing you're probably going to want to get is a pure daisy. It's one of the most important flowers in Batania. Um, so basically what this does is it gives you access to two materials that Batania uses a lot, living wood and living stone. All right, so in order for this to work, you just take four mystical white petals, which we have, and every flower that you make in Batania um, typically is made in the petal apothecary. You throw in all the components, and then once they're all in there, you drop in one uh, seed, vanilla seeds, and you'll get your flower. Sweet. So I've got my first Batania flower, and I'm gonna pop it down right here. I'm gonna clean out some of this area and we'll let it get started. So, uh, what did I tell you guys? This thing makes uh, living wood and living stone. And in order for this to work, you're going to need uh, some vanilla wood and vanilla stone. So, that's why I was cooking all this stuff up ahead of time, and I should have some wood available here as well. Now, it only works, uh, according to the book, as we saw, in a semi not terribly large radius, right? So just immediately around the flower. So only eight blocks at a time per flower. And don't worry, we'll definitely get into automating this at some point, but for now, we're just gonna do it manually. Uh, so just like the flower, the book said, I'm gonna go with four and four, but you could have all stone or all wood or seven stone and one wood, whatever combination you want. Uh, but you'll see here that some nifty little particle effects are floating by, and after about one minute, they should transform. So let's give this a minute and I will come back when it's ready. There we go. Our living wood just transformed, which means our living stone should transform very quickly after it. So yeah, it's been about a minute. Uh, let's see, do I still have my ax on me? Cool. I wonder if this will work on this living stones, living wood stuff. Oh, nice. It does. I like it. So there you go. That's how you make it. So I'm going to make a few more pieces of this. I'm going to get a bunch of stone and a bunch of wood and I'll be right back. While I'm waiting for that, guys, I'm going to add a uh, item filter thing here. I'm going to set it up so that all my Batania flowers go into this chest 
instead of this chest, okay? And in order to do this, it's actually gonna be pretty easy. I'm just gonna set it to insert mode. We'll keep it on the green channel. I'm gonna use a basic item filter, uh, and I'm gonna tell it to ignore metadata. The important part there is ignoring metadata because all the Batania flowers are the same item ID, 876, and they're all determined by their metadata. So colon 12, colon 11, colon 13. So if we tell it to ignore metadata, like so, uh, and we'll give it a higher priority, like two, right? So it, it'll always go there first. If I pull all the Batania flowers out of here, Batania flowers, I think that's all of them that are in there, right? Uh, yeah, that looks good. And I throw them all in, so what should happen, I'm just sorting a little miscellaneous here, but that's fine. All the Batania flowers should wind up down here. See? That's the importance of knowing how metadata works, is you can really take advantage of things. Uh, so now all Batania flowers will land down there, but all regular seeds and everything else should land down here, just like you would expect. Cool. Oh, my seeds didn't make it down there? What happened? I guess I didn't have seeds in here when I last did the snapshot. Okay, well that's okay, because I'm gonna do a new snapshot anyway for this thing, and then we're good. Uh, by the way, my purple flower didn't go there because we're not doing a mod sort, we're doing a uh, specific item sort. If I wanted to also include the flowers, I'm pretty sure these do the same thing, right? The, the mystical flowers, they have a metadata value as well. So if I put any flower petal in there, all flower petals will go down there. Not a bad trick, right? So keep an eye on metadata, it's definitely useful. I'm going to upgrade that to an iron chest because now I've got a ton of items going that way, right? All different kinds of petals and flowers and whatnot. Might wind up moving that chest later into the new house that I built for Batania, but for now it'll be all right. Let's snag, do I have any more cable facades? I must not. I'm going to make a few more. All right, uh, I'm going to get a few more of those uh, different types of um, Batania living wood and living stone, and we'll be back in a minute once that's ready. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is create a very basic mana pool. That's made with just five living rock. Now, this is a diluted mana pool. It's pretty weak, and it really can't do a lot. Uh, it mostly can't even, you know, do much of the crafting mechanics that normal mana pools can do. We're going to need to upgrade it pretty soon. But before we can do that, we're going to need to uh, get some mana. So in order for that to work, what we're going to have to do is, first off, get some generating flora. Now, the earliest and easiest way to make uh, mana uh, is probably using the day bloom. This is a simple flower. It's very weak and it's very slow, but it should manage to get you some basic uh, flowers. Basically, it's solar power for Batania. Uh, basically, you require two yellow petals, an orange, and a light blue. So let's see what we've got in our petals chest. Two orange petals, or two yellow flowers, an orange, and a light blue. I've got a light blue, but I don't have any orange. So let's go out into the world and see if we can't find any. Uh, by the way, I think it mentioned in the book here that if you want to get access uh, to flowers. Uh, I think we could see it. Let's see. Oh, look, there's a creeper hanging out in my thing. Awesome. See you later, buddy. Um, it does tell you, by the way, if you want, you can go ahead and make yourself uh, some floral fertilizer, which is just bone meal, and some floral white powder, which is just basically any Batania flower in a pestle and mortar. So you can use any color, I think. It doesn't have to be the white one. And you'll have uh, basically bone meal that can get you some more Batania flowers. So I'm going to collect a few of these guys. We're obviously going to want a good bit. And I'll be back in a few uh, once I find, number one, the flower I'm looking for. And number two, just more flowers in general. All right, be right back. All right, so to recap, now that I've gone out and hunted out a whole bunch of cool stuff, uh, what I'm going to say is that we're going to get just a handful of these things. Let's go back to our generating flower day blooms. They require two yellow, one light blue, and one orange petal. So let's get those plus a handful of seeds ready to rock. And I think I need a new bucket because I lost mine. Don't ask. I lost mine, I mean my inventory filled up and I was looking for something to get rid of and the bucket lost. <laughs> um, obviously making a little bit more uh, wood over there, so let's go. You're ready. I'm going to get myself the two. So I'm getting a bunch of these because I want a handful of these flowers. So I wanted to make sure, we will probably get about four to begin with. So one, one, two, one, and then the seeds. Ta-da! One, one, two, one, and then the seeds. Nice, right? Cool. 
one, one, two, one, and then seeds. There we go. So now I've got my generating day blooms. Now the only thing that the, the Lexica Batania here mentions specifically related to the day blooms is that you don't want to place them adjacent to each other. So I'm going to put them, uh, if you check this out, right, shift right click on it, you'll see placing them next to each other is bad. What you want to do is place them in kind of a uh, pattern like this so that there's no flower adjacent to another one. If you do place one in the middle here, you'll see that they get this little particle effect indicating to you that they are not being as efficient as possible. So, you know, when they have flowers next to each other, there's just not enough daylight coming from the sky to work them out and do what you want to do with them. Neat stuff. All right, so now that we've got that set up, I'm definitely going to want a bit more wood. So let's prepare to make that. Nice. Awesome, right? Like I said, I've automated this a couple different ways. We'll definitely come up with something. So the next thing we're going to want to get is a way to handle manipulating the way these things work. So if we take a look at that mana manipulation, one of the things we're going to want to get, actually I think it's in basics and mechanics, it's the wand of the forest, okay? This allows you to kind of, it's almost like the wrench of Batania, right? It's it's the device that you're going to hold in your hand and do things with. So we're going to need a couple living wood twigs, which are two living wood like so. So luckily I've been making living wood, cool. We're going to need three of them. And then we get to pick whatever color flowers we want. So I'm going to go with like blue and red. How does that sound cool? Sure, why not? So blue and red. So then just this and whatever flowers you want here designate the particular colors you get there. That looks cool. Yeah, I like it. Cool. So I've got my wand of the forest. And then the only other thing we're going to need for now uh, is handled in the mana manipulation section called the mana spreader. This is what allows you to take the mana generated from your flowers and dump it either into a... Um, a mana pool like the one we just made a minute ago or for any blocks that require mana so if we take a look in any eye here we'll see that the mana spreader is just uh some living wood a piece of gold and any color flower so we'll snag a piece of gold here and we'll do this one two three and why not red sure mana spreader done deal cool oops i didn't mean to put that in there i'm guessing batania might wind up in here I don't have a chest for all Batania items yet. I only have the chest for the Batania flowers and petals. I might add a chest somewhere for something like that. Okay. So here we go, outside the mana pool. So what I'm going to do is place, um, basically, these things are generating mana. And you can tell because I've got nifty little particle effects. With the Wand of the Forest, you can right-click to see how much mana is currently stored. Right now, they're full of their own little internal buffer of mana, so we want to do something about that. We want to dump it into a mana pool. And in order for that to work, we're going to need to have a mana spreader somewhere nearby. So let's see. I always forget which way the mana spreader I should place down. I think if I do that, there we go. Cool. Now you'll notice that when we hold the wand of the forest, we'll see where the mana spreader is shooting. Basically what happens is he will fill up his own little internal buffer, and you can see it represented by that green little bar there. The day blooms, when you right click on them, you will see are now empty. Okay, so they're no longer storing their internal buffer of mana. They're generating it very slowly and slowly but surely throwing it into the mana spreader here. You'll see when I right clicked on the mana spreader, you'll just uh, see that there's a little bit more mana. Now once enough mana fills up in the mana spreader, what we just saw was a pulse of mana. And you'll uh, be able to read about that if you flip through the pages here under mana spreader. Okay, So basically it allows mana to travel from point A to point B and uh, it'll just kind of shoot out this little uh, pulse of mana and it empties out its internal buffer. So every now and then, as the internal buffer gets filled up from the day blooms, it's going to build up enough mana and shoot it into the mana pool, which now has its own little bit of mana stored in there. So this diluted mana pool can store a very small amount of mana comparatively to the upgraded mana pool. And it also works as a bit of a crafting mechanic. We can use this to create better items. In order for this to work, we're going to need to craft one of the first items that we want to make. And I'm going to try and get it now. I don't know that we have enough mana. Um, it's actually, we can upgrade the diluted mana pool to a better version, just like so. You ready? 
all you do is drop the item on there. And you'll see when you mouse over it uh, whether or not it'll work. Oh, nice. We just got a mana burst, and it just changed from an X to a green check, meaning that there is now enough mana in the pool to handle this operation. So when I drop the diluted mana pool in there, it sucks up some of the mana, so we no longer have mana in there, but we got our upgraded mana pool, which is awesome. So I'm gonna actually get rid of the diluted mana pool. There is very little that you wanna do with this thing, aside from maybe some basic storage or something. Um, it's really a very basic block. You really wanna do most of your things with the mana pool because very few recipes work in the diluted mana pool. As far as I know, I think only making a mana pool is what the diluted mana pool is for. There might be a couple other things, but for now, you just want to trust me and get a mana pool as soon as possible. So our day blooms are operational. Nice. Uh, there's a bunch of other flowers that we can use, by the way. Let's see if there's any that are available to us right now, or if we need to wait for a bit of mana to generate before we can make any more good ones. All right, before we wrap up, there's one more flower I want to show you. Uh, however, it requires a new mechanic. Sometimes, like in the flower I want to make here, you need not just mystical petals, but you need mana petals. So in order to get mana petals, it's really easy. You simply drop the mystical petal into a mana pool, and for a very small amount of mana, you should get a mystical, or the uh, mana version of that petal. Okay, so in the, the, the flower I want to make right now is the endo flame, and it's going to basically require a brown mana petal, a red mana petal, and a red, brown, and gray normal petal. So let's do this. Oops, I didn't want that to drop there, but that's okay because I don't think we have enough mana at the moment. So let's give this just a minute to s generate a little bit more mana, and hopefully... I'll have enough for what I want to do, because once we get access to this flower, our mana creation will be a lot faster. Well, not a lot faster, but faster nonetheless. Uh, these day blooms are extremely slow. You're going to want to have at least like 10 or 20 of them if you want any kind of decent, you know, light-based power generation. So let's see, mana spread. Are you almost ready here to do a mana burst? Come on now. By the way, you can see mana bursts um, even when you're not holding the uh, one of the forest there we go cool so are you capable yet still no okay i'll be back in a minute once this mana pool has filled up hey all right we finally built up enough mana here to get our first flower uh so i got the brown mana petal now i just need a red one and we should be good to go not yet though need more mana all right after a little bit of a rough night i am ready to make this flower so let's take a look uh, i need my bucket to fill up this pool here and it should be something like one red mana petal, one brown metal petal, one red, one brown mystical petal, and one light gray petal. They should all be floating around in there doing their thing. And then, by the way, just hitting Q drops it. Nice. End of flames. Beautiful. These things are pretty cool. I don't think it'll be a problem if you place it kind of adjacent to your day blooms. It's only the day blooms themselves that can't be too adjacent to each other. Uh, endo flames are cool because what they do is they will burn up items. Just drop an item on it and it should pick up that item at some point and start burning it. And you'll notice that it generates, you know, a little bit more power probably than the day blooms do. So uh, you'll notice that this thing should be filling up a little bit faster now that we've got an endo flame there doing its job. Now, obviously, a little wood plank is not going to last very long. The other downside to endo flames that I should warn you guys about is it'll only pick up one item at a time. So don't plan on just dropping, you know, a stack of coal on there and walking away. That's not going to work. It'll only pick up one item at a time. So what I'm going to do is make a bunch of coal blocks. Cool. So we'll demonstrate this, right? If I go ahead and just throw regular old coal down, it should eat it up. I'll throw two pieces of coal, right? So watch what happens. You'll notice that it ate up one piece of coal. And the mana being generated, definitely faster. If you keep right-clicking here, you'll see it's generating mana a lot quicker than the day blooms were. Of course, it's not solar power. It does cost resources. Not a big deal. Uh, and you'll see, of course, that the um, mana little bursts there are definitely running faster. So this endo flame is very much more efficient than day blooms but of course runs on some kind of burnable resource but the good news is i can go ahead and drop some blocks of coal on there and go ahead and start getting a decent amount of mana not bad right so that piece of coal will just sit there and if uh the current piece of coal takes a long time to get burned up inside the endo flame uh that regular first piece of coal might expire because items expire after five minutes in minecraft right so you can see that it just picked up that piece it went into the endo flame so 
not bad. We get a decent amount of mana from this, and our mana pool is starting to generate. So what I'm going to do is drop my block of coal on there, and then once that piece of coal is finished, I'll take that block of coal. Maybe we'll automate this at some point soon. I think I've come up with an idea or two that my current tech level will allow me to automate this process. We'll see, though. Uh, for now, it is definitely wrapping up point for the episode. So uh, without further ado, Dial 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I'll be back next time. Uh, I'm going to, in between this episode and next, see about getting some resources that I'm going to need to make a nice looking or at least my attempt at a nice looking Batania building. No promises, but uh, I'll do my best. All right, guys, take it easy.